Hi, it's Grandma from Grandma's Footsteps and today we're going to make you this beautiful Kingfisher. Um, it's not as bad as it looks. Okay, so first of all we start with our piece of felt cut to slightly bigger than the size we wish our finished picture to be. And then we lay out some of our material. We just basically need um, a sky and some water with this one, so not too much uh, work to do here. But um, yeah, nice background, pick your colours, do whatever you like, it's your picture. I just add a little bit of highlight to the water here. And now I start to needle felt. Um, as before, round the edges first using my double needle, which is just two needles held together with an elastic band. I then move on to my six needle, which does felt a large area quite quickly. Um, but I don't do too much with the six needle. Um, I think it makes too many needle holes visible. So um, I start off just to get a nice flat surface um, and then uh, a nice felted surface and then I will move to a, uh, smaller needles and do a little bit more detail work with it. So there I go, I'm back to my uh, double needle again and just quickly needle felting it all down. Now when I have finished needle felting this down, um, I will iron it um, with a steam iron. Uh, obviously you've got to be a little bit careful but that's what I will do first of all I'm going to cut off all the excess um, the reason for ironing it is I do like a nice flat surface um, to work on but also because it helps to throw the background back and lift the foreground forward so the Kingfisher will look more three-dimensional now I'm just using a few of those off cuts to fill in little spaces um, where the back uh, backing sheet was showing, backing felt was showing a little bit. Um, there, and another quick go over, and in a minute you'll be able to see the um, ironed piece of uh, felt. I usually iron it on the back first. Now you can only iron it at a temperature that the wool will take. But there you go, it's um, it's ironed now, and you can see that I've got the um, bird actually on top of the background. Now what I've done is I've got a picture and I've used these sulky iron-on transfer pens and I've drawn around to give me a basic shape. Um, first of all I turned the picture uh, round because I wanted the bird to point to the right and obviously when you turn that upside down like that um, to transfer it onto the fabric um, it will be back to front otherwise. So there we go. Unfortunately, it didn't come out as well as it usually does. So I've actually lost some detail there, like the beak. Um, but I'll show you how we get around that later on. So all I'm going to do now is to start um, adding some bits of wool um, in, needle felting them in, and uh, to see how we get on. But because I need lost some of the uh, transfer, what I'm doing now is cutting out the bird from my piece of paper, which was a printed uh, photo, but please make sure that you use uh, royalty free um, images so you don't get into any problems. But now I've put the bird on top of the um, backing there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the shape of the bird using wool. Now all you need is a very fine, thin piece of wool um, in the colour, I usually like to try and use the colour that that particular part of the uh, bird will be. So in this case I'm using blue and I'm just gently felting and I'll felt round the head um, so that I know where I'm supposed to be stopping the felting. So it's a way of doing it. You could do that right from the start, but I do prefer to use the, um, the transfer pens if I can. I will try and leave a link down below in the, in the description with my Amazon affiliate links to get some of the uh, transfer pens. These are particularly good ones. So 
Um, I'll try and do that for you. And now I'm just outlining the beak. It doesn't have to be too precise at this time, um, just so that you've got an idea of how long the beak is and, and where exactly it attaches to the bird and, and things like that. You'll see the beak looks a fairly weird shape there, but when we start to fill it in, you'll see that it comes into the correct shape. Now I'm going to add um, some of my lovely blended wools to the uh, top of the head. And this is the, the quite dark colour. Um, I usually put dark colours on first and then lighten them if I need to. Um, with the exception of white, white I usually put on and then add something to the top of that if it's too stark, which I do actually later on. But um, that's how I how I like to work. I like to get the dark colours underneath, and then when if you put a light, a very light covering of a lighter colour or more than one colour over the top, you'll find that it it gives it more depth, and you can see some of the dark possibly showing through. Um, so, and now some people would just take a large piece of the blue and would felt the whole of this head in one go. I prefer to use small pieces of felt, of um, wool, sorry. The reason for this is I do like to be able to control um, where, which direction my wool goes in, particularly with things like birds and animals, because you want feathers and fur to look as if they're going in the right direction as they actually would on the animal. Um, and it's it's quite important I think. It takes a little bit longer maybe but um, I do like to do it that way and you'll see that I'm also adding a, little, a few bits of lighter colour in there which um, just gives a little bit of highlight. Again I shall be covering it all with a, um, a blend later but I think it really does help to have this underneath. It gives you an idea of, of, of where, um, where you're going with your um, felting. So there we go, that's done that, little, a few more little light bits in there, and uh, yeah, some nice thin bits. And it doesn't matter that it's not perfectly round and curved at the moment, because um, we will be adding more wool um, later on, as I said. I'm now adding some little bits of the orangey red. Um, colour into his face here and uh, just above his beak in this case but um, yeah it really does look pretty when it, it stands out with that orangey red it's actually taken from the same uh, mix that I've used for the background there in the sky um, I'm just picking out all the red parts of it so okay now what I'm going to do now is to place the eye, um, and you'll see that I stuck my needle through there and so that I could see exactly where the eye should be and I left my needle standing in there while I took a small piece of black and felt it and uh, rolled it up and we felted that on and added a little white highlight to the eye. Um, now I'm going to add more red round the eye and back across the head a little. We'll do more to the eye later. And there's a close-up of the eye at the top of the head. Now I'm mixing a little bit of the red 
with a little bit of black to make that sort of dark reddy tinge under the under the underneath the beak there um, and I'm just felting that on and a little bit of the lighter red again ready orange just put a highlight in it um, so the beak doesn't look quite so weird now and I'm just putting some blue onto the top of the uh, the beak there it's the, it's the darker of the two blues that I'm using here but I will put highlights on that as well um, because the beak is a hard um, thing it will uh, catch light so it will have some highlights on there and now we're putting the beak opening um, with some black very fine piece of black wool there I keep looking at my picture and deciding where um, the different colours should go and just adding pieces of colour where I think they should be and um, we can refine this later. just like to get some of the colour on there. And also I'm taking that black back round the eye um, there, there's a, uh, um, a very dark uh, sort of mark there. And a little tiny bit of red on the end of the beak. And now we shall start to fill in some of the I changed my mind with that one actually. I'd put the dark colour in and then decided to change it for the lighter one. So yeah, it's quite simple. If you change your mind, just pull it off and um, do you know, do it the colour you want. You can needle felt is very forgiving, you can pull things off. A little bit of black under there, um, and that gives a bit more shape to that particular bit of feather there. Now, you'll notice that down the back, I'm starting to put some of the lighter colour. Well, it's more of a, of a kingfisher colour, um, in my opinion. But um, I later change it slightly. Um, but it's just a matter of coming down, getting your shape in there, and a bit of colour. Now I'm starting to add the branch that the bird will be sitting on. Um, I'm, we do this virtually the same as the trees that we did in the previous videos. Um, in fact, there is a making a tree video um, all by itself. So I'm using one of the blended walls that I think looks uh, the right colours. And I'm just basically laying down the, uh, the tree branch and needle felting it onto the background here. Um, I do a little bit of fiddling about um, here, separating out the wool and making some branches over to the right, but unfortunately um, we're off the uh, off shot, so you can't see it, but um, 
there's the branches there that I that I made. A um, little bit of red now coming down along his back. Um, it's almost like a, 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 a halo sort of round him with the red. But uh, yeah, it's looking nice. A little bit of red in his head. Um, and now I'll just continue to be filling him in. We will be doing some more work on the uh, tree branch, so uh, you haven't missed very much. Little bit of highlight now on the beak, um, which I said we would be doing. Just a bit of a lighter blue there, um, make the, the beak pop a little bit more. And all the time I, I'm looking for areas that um, are not completely felted down, where there might be bumps or, or um, loose ends. A little bit more work around the eye now. Um, a bit more black going in there. That's it. Makes his eye really stand out. actually some red on the tip of his wings so we're just adding um, that now and also the other wing which can just be seen only the very tip of it so we're putting a bit of red there as well um, and we sort of blend it into uh, the sort of other colours under feathers here. Um, I'm using the light colour um, and I'm folding a piece in half so that it sort of it gives me a good area and also you can show a little bit of the um, underbody through between the uh, what will be the feathers. But this is the under wings or the um, yeah I think that's what you call them I don't they're under feathers anyway. Um, so I'm picking out the bits of the colour that I want. Um, in some cases I want a little bit more white, and in some cases I just want uh, a bit more of the pure blue. So that's his um, feathers going in there. And uh, yeah.
So you notice now the tip of the wing, that red bit there, I've just put over the blue that goes down, um, down to his tail. So that's from his body down to his tail. I'm adding a few little bits of black in here. Um, you won't see them very much when it's finished, but it does just give that little bit of uh, dark showing uh, shading. And now on, we're starting on the wing. Again, I'm using fairly small pieces. Uh, they're, they're long, but they're not very wide because I'm trying to control the direction that these feathers go in um, to make it look more wing-like. again adding some light and some dark colours in there just to give a nice base direction that the uh, felt the, the wool is felted actually um, shows a wing um, and the way that the wing would be or the feathers on the wing would be so that's just bringing it down now right to the bottom the tip of the wing into that red piece and filling in up around the top here now he does want a bit of orange around there but not a huge amount and just putting a couple of uh, little very fine pieces of uh, red wool in there which is just where the red just shows on the, on the ends of a couple of feathers now what I've done is I've mixed the two blues together I've made a blend of my own with the two blues using the, uh, the cards um, and the carding paddles and now I'm just putting that over the top um, quite lightly quite gently um, and some of those darker colors as you can see are actually showing through from underneath um, and just this just makes it the color that I wanted but I do like to have that um, darker colors underneath and now I'm actually adding white down his back but I will tone that down later because the white is too stark I, I find so um, just that bit down the back there but I end up not liking it and um, I tone it down with a pale blue It's really lovely to use the um, the blue with the uh, sparkles in to make water, but it's a bit of a nuisance because the sparkles go everywhere and they stick to everything, and I have to keep removing them from the uh, from the bird when they show up. Um, but yeah, I'm just sort of filling in some of the mix that I made now on the top of his head and refining the shape of his head, um, and now I'm adding bits to the branch um, there on the left hand side but and some shadow under the wing and that really makes the wing look three dimensional you don't want too much you don't want a really wide piece but yeah there it is and a little leg um, I did actually bring the, the uh, branch up a little bit high which so it means that he's sort of his leg is not a hundred percent how I'd like it but it's going to work um, and don't forget that it needs to be curved because it's grasping the branch 
And so if you just put it straight, it will look like it won't look like it. Now, I think this is where I tone down my um, blue. Uh, sorry, I tone down the white using a little pale blue. Um, and I think it looks a lot better because the white really did stand out. The bit of white on his head, yeah, it's supposed to be white and it's supposed to stand out. But down his back there, it's just a, a highlight, really. Um, and uh, so I'm a lot happier with it one, so that I lose that dark blue line. And try and shape it a little better there. Okay. And now I've added a little bit of the lighter colour, the lighter blue there, to the under feathers. And um, as you can see, it definitely helps to shape the wing there um, by having a, a different colour for the under and I felt the edge of the wing quite hard so that it um... now I'm going to do a little bit more work on the tree branch um, I'm just adding some bits of wool um, and just changing it slightly uh, a little bit darker on the right hand side so that it um, looks a little bit more like it's in shadow and adding a couple of branches by separating out the wool and even felting it down where I want it. Um, yeah, I'm quite, quite happy with the way this is going, adding a few branches in, um, just making sure that they do uh, attach to the main branch correctly so that you haven't got like a you know a branch coming out at a right angle and not looking very good so there we go we've added some more branches and now i'm adding some leaves small pieces of green um, roll them up in your hand pull them out make different shapes um, and just needle felt them on once you've done that, you can needle felt some other colours into it. I like to put some darker green around the bottom of each clump of leaves because it just makes it look like a shadow and it gives it that bit of extra colour and texture to it. So that's what I'm doing here, just adding some dark green in places. Um, and yeah, it's coming on really nicely. And adding, just put the leaf the leaf bunches wherever you think they should be you know but don't cover up all the branches that you made and also make sure you've got some sky peeping through um, that's important so um, now we're adding little bits of yellow to the very tops of the um, clumps of leaves uh, that's so that it looks like it's caught the light because uh, leaves with light on are going to look a, a lighter colour than the leaves without the light on um, and yeah it makes it more interesting and uh, more colourful as well so that's all I'm doing there adding just a few bits of the uh, yellow in to show up the highlights on the leaves and give it a little bit more interest And remember, you can always add more. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Roll up some green on the other side. Just roll it up. Get some slightly different shapes and sizes from your uh, light green that you're using. And uh, just plonk them down where you think they should be. Um, really, it's, it's your picture. It's up to you. But, you know, you want it to look balanced. You want... You don't want great big clumps in one place and nothing in another so you just want to add a few bits on to make it um, to make it look interesting and uh, yeah again we're putting some darker green in here in a minute um, to make it look like it's uh, got some shadows in there and some different color greens because um, trees are definitely not all one color green Oh, 
also adding the yellow at the top um, again to catch a little bit of light and um, the only other thing I've done is I've added a little bit of um, an up, up right um, branch or trunk to the tree and now I'm just just something a little bit different just some very light green and I'm just uh, making a few bits hang down from the branch there a um, little bit of interest something a little bit different um, that particular one I'm doing now is to look as if it's coming down behind the tree so I cut it off level with the bottom of the tree and just that little bit of green is sort of mossy or, or, or whatever a um, little bit of interest but we're nearly there we're nearly finished so brilliant I hope you've enjoyed it don't forget I've got some Amazon links down below um, if you click on one of them and buy something I get a little bit of money um, and that helps me out to do more videos um, like, comment, subscribe, and I've really enjoyed, really, really enjoyed um, doing this tutorial for you today, um, and I hope you've enjoyed watching. Just felting down the odd loose bit of wool um, just before I say it's finished. And there we go, there's your finished picture um, in all its glory. 